God is yet in control. And so today we thank God for this lesson today, and we thank God for each of you that are on the line. This is Lighthouse Evangelistic Prayer Cathedral, and we're coming today today with the theme, Storming the Gates of Prayer. Again, we need to understand that one of the greatest weapons that we have is the weapon of prayer, mm. seeking the throne of God, praying and believing God will hear and answer our prayer. I want you to understand something today. Amen. It is important for us to know that the greatest secret that you can have is the secret of prayer. Shutting the closet door behind you, going into secret and praying to the Spirit of God who will reward us openly. <clears throat> the Bible says this, and I want you to understand that it's very important for you to know, praying has purpose and power, yes. and there is the mightiest force in the world. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, mm -hmm. that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is found in James 5 and 16. Hear me today because it is important for you to understand that it's time for us to go back to the medium of prayer. Storming the gates of prayer sh should be an adventure of every believer who wants to see the world be transformed into a safe haven for salvation and deliverance. Someone said long time ago, and I quote, prayer is the key, faith unlocks the door. To every believer who is locked in the struggles of life, and that's you and that's me, Remember, the gates of prayer must be kept open by you and by me, praying to a prayer-hearing God who answers and set the captives free. Today, I want you to understand that it's time to be a James. It's time to be a Peter. It's time to be a Luke, finding the theme of what reaches God through the medium of prayer. There should be an adventure in praying to the God who answers our prayers and bring joy into our lives through his grace and peace invested in his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who's also our Savior. We need to look at the Bible in its entirety, both the Old and New Testament, to see men and women of God who prayed and God heard and delivered them from their trials and tribulations. And as the old folks said, if he did it for them, he'll do it for you. Here today we see such great kings, priests, statesmen, prophets, and prophetess, as well as mighty women of faith who brought down Satan's kingdom through prayer, such as the great Hezekiah, the king of Israel, who prayed to the Lord as found in the book of Isaiah 37 verses 14 through 20. Now Isaiah 37, 21 through 38. There we see King Hezekiah, sickness, and the prophecy from Isaiah in Isaiah 38, 1 through 8. We see the king storming the gates of prayer to live and not die, turning his face to the walls and praying to a prayer hearing God. Listen to me very carefully, for the prophet gave the king the message, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. And before the prophet Isaiah could get out of the outer courts of the palace, God turned him around to go and prophesy 15 more years out to the king's life. And you and I must understand now that it's a point of emphasis for us to go back to the very thing that the old folk taught us. Pray and believe God with all of your heart. I need you to understand today that then where would we be if we uh, did not listen to Hannah in the temple, storming the gates of prayer for her barren condition. And the Spirit of God heard her and gave her a son by the name of Samuel, who was a prophet indeed, who anointed the first and second kings of Israel. I need you to understand today that we need to go back to the spirit of prayer. Let me share that with you today because it is important for you to understand Praying brings us into fellowship. Praying brings us into relationship. 
Praying brings us into an area where we can contact God and God can contact us. Listen to me very carefully today. You and I, we need to follow the ways of God and pray by storming the gates of the altar of heaven until our loved ones are saved, healed, and delivered. We see prayer in the temple and homes that changed the course of history and brought praise to the God of glory. In the temple, we see the King Solomon prayer of dedication found in 1 Kings 8, 22 through 32. The results were fire and smoke, which was a result of God's glory, anointing this place as a special place for worship and sacred seat for God to dwell on the earth. Coupled with that, that would be the prayer of repentance as found in 2 Chronicles 7, 11 through 22. You know it well, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and they would turn back to God, he said, I will hear from heaven and I will save their land. I need you to understand today that we who are in the area of praying, we need to pray that our loved ones be delivered. Pray that our loved ones be healed. Pray that our loved ones be saved and brought into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And who could forget the prayer of Job from God to favor his friends and restore their lives from being cursed by God? Job 42, 7 through 9. How many of you today realize that God wants you to pray for those who don't understand how mighty and powerful our God is to hear and answer our prayers. All you have to do is believe God, trust God, and stand on the promise that he will hear and answer your prayer. The songwriter wrote a song, Somebody is praying for me. They had me on their mind. They took a little time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. In other words, it's time for us now to reach out to our loved ones, to reach out to our companies, to reach out to our friends, and pray the prayer of faith, and believe God that he's going to heal, deliver, and set free. Over in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 25 through 31, we see the great apostle Paul and his companion Silas locked up in jail, and in the inner prison. But at midnight, the Bible said, they had a revival of prayer and praise that shook heaven and caused a great earthquake in the jail that brought freedom to the disciples and salvation to the Philippian jailer. Look at your neighbor today, wherever you are, and say, preaching and preparing to breach with prayer. The goal is to make sure you reach heaven and have an answer from the God who hears both day and night. I need you to know today that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Bible said he's available, but well, are you available to move now in the realm of prayer? Mm -hmm. Again, we see in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 8, where the Apostle Paul admonishes his spiritual son, Timothy, and yes, even our ministries today, to stay prayerful and alert to fight against the devil and his kingdom. Yeah. We have been admonished to lift up our holy hands without wrath and doubting. Faith to believe in a God who hears and answers prayers of his saints. Listen, these prayers by these men and women of God shows us that in the 21st century that they have prepared to pray and to walk in the ways of prayer and duty and to fulfill their lives by communicating to God on a daily basis. I need you to know that we need to know today how to pray, how to reach heaven, and how to release every burden. The word of God said, cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Listen to me, even sometime our government is an oppression, just like the three Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, 9 through 29, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who was asked to bow down to an idol. 
But I want you to understand, they said, the only one we're going to bow down to is the God of heaven. And even though you have proclaimed to cast us into the fiery furnace, we shall not bow. I want you to understand today that it's important for you to keep your focus, to stay alert, and to understand that you are reaching the only God that can hear and answer your prayers. Today I establish that prayer is an adventure, and no matter what state or trials or tribulations you are involved in, you can pray your way out and be lifted up by praising God. And it's now, today, a time to pray our first prayer of deliverance in this prayer of fasting and celebrating the Word of God, the prayer of encouragement, that the unity of the believers we have together Let's stand and grab a hold of the word of God and pray, Lord, bring deliverance in our homes. Lord, bring deliverance on our jobs. Lord, bring deliverance in our communities. What we want to see is men, women, boys, and girls turning into the prayer of deliverance and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior, believing that his blood is the atoning sacrifice to bring them out of sin and shame and to bring them into a place where they can reach up, look up, and find help in the time of need. I need you to know that we're going to take a closer look of prayer that is so important in the ministry of the church and home. You need to be like James. Pray until your knees are knobbed out. Pray until you know that God will hear and answer your prayer. The songwriter said, I know prayer changes things. Ah, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. But I know this, prayer changes things. So the prayer of encouragement and the unity of the believers today, we stand affirm to believe God, to save, to deliver, and to set our loved ones free. I don't know about you, but the Bible says that God don't want anyone to perish, that all come to repentance, all come to the place where they accept him as their personal savior. And so today you and I are going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Touch our loved ones. Yes, Touch Lord. our families. Touch Bring them under conviction. Bring them to a place where they said yes to the Lord. Yes. yes in their hearts. Transformed in their minds. Renewed in their spirit. To say yes, Lord. Yes to your will. And yes to your way. Today we ask in the name of Jesus that you do a new thing even in us. For the word says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, now all things have become new. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let newness resonate in our lives, that we become prayer warriors, praying the prayers of faith and believing God for determination to move in our families, in our jobs, and in our homes. I need you to know now that it's important that we will have a prayer life and that you have a prayer partner, someone who can believe with you, stand firm on the promises of God, and know this, that prayer still works. Mm -hmm. Listen to me in this adventure of storming the gates of prayer that you are going through, you have back up in God's holy word. There are 66 books that he has given us from the book of Genesis to the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew, to the book of Revelation. And all of it is based on the prayer of faith, believing that God said it, he's going to do it. These great men and women that we talked about earlier in the halls of faith, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, they touched heaven through prayer, and they believed the word of God as a confirming evidence that things would change not only in their lives, but in the lives of those that are around them. Second point of prayer for today is that we want people to be saved and delivered yes, from yes, the yes. penalty of sin and death. We want our relatives and our friends to come out of darkness and come into a marvelous light. Mm 
Let's pray for salvation in the blood of Jesus Christ, salvation and renewal according to Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, that God will be done in our family and friends' lives, and they will come to the realization and say, what must I do to be saved, to be delivered, and to be set free? The call of salvation to our communities that are around us, the call to our cities that we live in. And finally, the names to call for salvation are those that you know that need to be saved. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we reach out today for the unsaved. Those that are in our homes, those that are on our jobs, those that we are in touch with day by day, we pray in the name of Jesus that their hearts will open, their minds will be transformed, their lives will be changed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he will save, deliver, and set them free and bring them into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you today because you will hear and answer our prayer, and we know today that many will be saved, delivered, and set free. Why? Because we are praying that their eyes open, their minds be renewed, their hearts be rejoiced in the fact that they are saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us today not to get tired, not to be weary, not to be worn, but Lord, give us the strength we need yes, to hold yes, to the hand yes, of God yes, that our families will be redeemed oh, by the blood of Jesus God. Christ. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now listen to me very carefully. I implore you to move into the posture of prayer today, whether it is on your knees, prostrate, on the floor, standing or sitting in your seats. I need you to know it's time to pray the prayer of faith and believe God for restoration, deliverance, and setting our families, our friends free. God is going to shake us up when we pray in unity and believe in faith and be on one accord. This day is the day of miracles for us to see those that we thought would never come to the Lord, find the church, come down to the altar, be saved, delivered, and set free. Now, it doesn't matter to me if it's Baptist, if it's Methodist, Presbyterian, but if it's a church that believes that Jesus is Lord and that he's the Savior who wants to redeem, heal, and set us free. I want that miracle to take place, and you have a testimony that you led someone to the Lord, and they found out that salvation was their best choice. Listen to me today. I need you to know that Paul said to us that was very important in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, and I quote, he says, not as though I have already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend mm -hmm. that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, what? forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So today our prayer and our prayer lives have changed as well as we storm the gates of prayer for those who need to be saved, delivered, and set free. The songwriter said, I found the answer. I've learned to pray. Lord, have mercy. I found the answer. I've learned to pray. With faith to guide me, I found the way. The sun is shining for me each day. I found the answer. I've learned to pray. Keep your Bible with you. Read it every day. Always count your blessings and always stop to pray. Learn to keep believing and faith will see you through. Seek to know contentment and it will come to you. I found the answer. I've learned to pray. With faith to guide me, I've found the way. And I want you to understand today that we're on a prayer vigil. We're on a time now where we seek the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind, transforming us into a place where prayer becomes the key and faith unlocks the door. And so today I want to ask a question to you as we move forward in the spirit of prayer. Are there any conditions to answered prayer? Are there any conditions 
to answered prayer. Some people would like to pray with no conditions. They wish God to be a celestial genie who, when summoned by prayer, must grant any request that they make. Can I share with you today that that's a false statement and it is not true? They find a measure of encouragement in the fable of Aladdin with his lamp, aspiring to the level of control over God's power in their prayer life. But the biblical fact is that prayer has conditions and you must meet those conditions. It is true that Jesus said, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Matthew 21 and 22. But even in that statement, we have one condition to prayer. As we examine the Bible, we find that there are other conditions to pray as well. And you need to understand what they are so you will not fail in getting an answer to what you're speaking to the God of heaven for. So, here are 10 biblical instructions concerning prayer that implies condition to prayer. Mm -hmm. Number one, pray to the Heavenly Father, according to Matthew 6 and 9. This condition to prayer might seem obvious, but it is important for you to understand. We don't pray to false gods or to idols or to ourselves. We don't pray to angels. We don't pray to Buddha or to the Virgin Mary. We pray to the God of the Bible, the eternal God who made heaven and earth and created you and me, who reveals himself in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and whose Spirit indwells in us when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. Coming to him in our prayer by saying, Father, implies that we are first his children and made so by faith in Christ Jesus. See John chapter 1, verse 12. Number 2, pray for good things, Matthew 7 and 11. We don't always understand or recognize what is good, but God knows. Yes, Are you hearing me today? And he is eager to give his children what is the best for them. Paul prayed three times to be healed of an affliction. And each time God said no. Why would a loving God refuse to heal Paul? Because God has something better for him, namely a life by grace. Mm -hmm. Paul stopped praying for healing and began to rejoice in his weakness and said, even in my weakness, I will find strength in the Lord. I need you to understand today that it's time for you to believe that God wants you to be on solid ground. Number three, Pray for needful things. Let me say that again. Pray for needful things. See Philippians 4 and 19. Placing a priority on God's kingdom is one of the conditions of prayer. Matthew 6 and 33. The promise is that God will supply all of our needs, not all of our wants. Well. Let me say that again. God will supply all of our needs, not all of our wants. There is a big difference, and you must understand today that he's going to take care of your need, not necessarily what you want. Number four, pray from a righteous heart. See James 5 and 16. The Bible speaks of having a clean conscience as a condition to answer prayer, Hebrews 10 and 22. It is important that we keep our sins confessed to the Lord. For if I regard weakness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Amen. Psalm 66 and 18. Listen to me very carefully today. Number five, pray from a grateful heart. Amen. See Philippians 4 and 6. Part of prayer is an attitude of thanksgiving. Yes. Father, I just want to say thank you. Yes. You woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me, even in the midst of sickness, even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of tribulations. I want to say thank you for blessing me and starting me on my way. Number six, pray according to the will of God. Not your will, but the will of God. See 1 John 5 and 14. An important condition to prayer is that it is prayed within the will of God. Jesus prayed this way all the time, even in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. Jesus said, Lord, not my will, not my but will. yours be yes. done. Yes. Luke 22 and 42. If we can pray 
all we want with great sincerity and faith for X, Y, and Z, but God's will is A, B, C. We pray amiss. You need to understand that it is now focusing on, Lord, what is your will for yeah. me? And not what I want or not what I'm seeking. But today in this prayer of faith, I'm seeking the will of the living God. Yeah. Number seven, pray in the authority of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See John 16 and 24. Jesus is the reason we are able to approach the throne of grace. According to Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. And guess what? He is our mediator between God the Father and you. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. And a condition to prayer is that we pray in his name. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's the intercessor standing before the throne of God and bringing us into a place where our prayers can and will be heard. Listen to me very carefully. Verse number 8. Pray persistently. You can't start praying and stop. You can't start praying and get disappointed. You can't stop praying and say, Lord, you didn't hear my prayer. I need you to understand that we need to pray persistently, according to Luke 18 and 1. In fact, the Bible says pray without ceasing, 1 mm. Thessalonians 5, 17, which is the shortest verse we have. Pray without ceasing. One of the conditions of effective prayer is that we don't give up. You remember the woman who came before the judge? He had refused everyone else. But when she came, she came on a consistent basis to the point that the judge said, if I don't hear this woman, she's going to wear me out. I need you to know that your prayers are important and you cannot give up. Pray until your prayer has been heard. Not only that, but number nine, pray unselfishly. Let me say that again. Pray unselfishly. See James 4 and 3. Our motives are important. Do you really need a Rolls Royce or do you just need a vehicle to get from point A to point D? Do you really need a mansion or just a house where you can live comfortably and serve God in prayer and faith? Do you really need a million dollars, what you're not going to give to anyone else? Or are you willing to pray the prayer, Lord, help me to help others, that we might move forward in the word of the living God? So I'll need you today, number 10, pray in faith. Mm. Let me say that again. Pray in faith. See James 1 and 6. Without faith, the Bible says it, imp it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 and 6 who alone can do the impossible is God. And so if you believe in God, you will have the faith to understand that when he finish you, you will be like the potter and the clay made over again to respect the word of the living God. Listen to me today without faith. Why pray? If you don't believe God, why are you praying in the first place. Listen to me today. Joshua prayed, you remember, for the sun to stand still while he was in a battle mm. looking like it was going to end in failure and audacious as the request was. He met all the conditions of prayer according to Joshua's 10, 12 through 14. Elijah prayed for rain to be withheld three years and six months. And guess what? It didn't rain in Israel or around Israel for three years and six months. Why? Because Elijah met all the conditions for the prayer he prayed. Listen to me today. Jesus' prayer as he stood before the tomb of Lazarus met all the conditions according to John 11 and 41. He prayed to the Father that this would be the Father's glory, and he told them to move the stone away. And all he did was call Lazarus. Now we know that our queen, she sang the song and said he called Lazarus three times, but he only had to call him once because one time was enough to move Lazarus from dead to be alive. And I want you to understand today only one time you pray and believe God to hear and answer your prayer. Godly, effective prayer has conditions, and you need to understand. And God invites us to pray. When we pray, we're praying for him to hear and answer our prayer. When we believe God, we want something big. When we pray, we pray audaciously. 
When we believe God, we want something audaciously. When we should pray, we must pray all the time. This is a time now for this day for you and I to get back to the spirit of prayer, to get back to the place where we know that we have a prayer hearing God. And I don't know about you today, but I'm concerned for our families. I'm concerned for our communities. I'm concerned for our cities, our government. Yes, and even the United States of America. We must go into prayer for the Spirit of God to have the right of way. Hear me today. Countless stories could be cited of disease cured, exams passed, repentance and forgiveness granted, relationships restored, hungry children fed, bills paid, and lives and souls saved through the efficacy of prayer. So yes, there is plenty of evidence that God answers prayer. Most of the evidence is an antidote and personal. However, and that bothers many who thinks of evidence only as that which is observable, measurable, and reproducible. But I want you to know that God has heard your prayer. you still alive today. And I want you to understand that it's time now to get back to the spirit of prayer. Scripture clearly teaches that prayer are answered. Sometimes the answer is no. You know that. Sometimes the answer is wait a while. And sometimes the answer is yes, as seen in James 5 and 16. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Are you hearing me today? Jesus taught his disciples that if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. John 15 and 7. 1 John 3.22 echoes this truth saying that we receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Notice that. Let me say that again so you can grab a hold to it. That whatever we ask, we receive it because we please him. Mm -hmm. And we understand now that if he abides in us and we abide in him, we are able now to ask and receive the answer to our prayers. Listen to me today. Scripture, moreover, is repleted with stories of answered prayer. Let me say that again. The scriptures from Genesis to Revelation are repleted with stories of answered prayer. Elijah prayed for fire from heaven in 2 Kings 1 and 12. Hezekiah prayed for the deliverance in 2 Kings 19.19. 19. And the apostles' prayer for boldness in Acts 4 and 29 are all just three examples. Since these accounts were written by eyewitnesses to the events, they constitute clear evidence of answered prayer. Mm -hmm. One might, of course, count that scripture does not represent observable evidence in the scientific sense. However, no statement of scripture has ever been conclusively disproved by any man in the past and in the present and not even in the future. So there is no reason to doubt its testimony. In fact, laboring some kinds of evidence as a scientific and other kinds as non-scientific is a fuzzy and artificial distinction at best. Such a distinction can only be made as a priority, i.e., prior to the evidence of evaluating the data. In other words, the choice to evaluate only in prayer, only in a light, observer, or evidence is not a choice motivated by data, but by prior philosophical commitments. When this arbitrary restriction is relaxed, the biblical data speaks clearly for itself. God answers prayer. Yes, he does. Psalm 66 and 18. If I regard weakness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So, what does that say, Apostle? If you are trying to pray a prayer of faith, but there's weakness in your heart, God is not going to hear that prayer until you seek forgiveness, repent, and turn from your wicked ways and turn back to God. Listen to me very carefully. Likewise, 1 John 5, 15 qualifies our receiving anything we ask with our obedience to God's command. James note that when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. In other words, what you were praying for was not really what you needed, nor what you really should receive. 
So a couple of reasons for unanswered prayer are unconfessed sins and wrong motivations. Did you get that? That's why your prayers have not been answered. Now you're going to turn and ask for forgiveness and seek the word of God in obedience so that your prayers can be heard. Another reason for unanswered prayers is a lack of faith. That's what I said. Another reason for the unanswered prayer is a lack of faith. When you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. This is found in James chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. And I advise you to read it. Hebrews 11 and 6 also identifies faith as a necessary condition for a relationship with God. Something always mediate by prayer in the name of Christ. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because anyone who comes to him must first believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So faith then is necessary for unanswered prayers. Finally, some critics of Christianity make the case that since Jesus instructs his disciples to ask, ask whatever you wish, all prayers should be answered. However, such criticisms completely ignore the conditions to the promise in the first part of that verse. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, there is clearly a prescription for praying within the will of God. In other words, genuine prayer, which God always answers, is in fact the sorts which request explicitly or inexplicitly that God will be accomplished and that his will of the petition is secondary. In other words, Lord, it's your will, not mine. Mm -hmm. What you will is what I will, and your wish is my wish. Jesus himself prayed this way in Gethsemane in Luke 22 and 42. The humble prayer of faith allows that the prayer may be answered with a no. Anyone not offering such a prayer, anyone who demands to be answered, has no right to expect an answer if you're going to wait on God. It's either going to be yes, it's going to be no, or it's going to be wait. And if it's yes, it's answered immediately. If it's no, there are conditions you must check and go back through in order to find out what you miss. And if it's wait, that's exactly what it means. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And they shall fly like an eagle and soar into the upper atmosphere. But only as you believe God in your answered prayer. Another reason why so many students study uh, to report effectiveness of prayer is that it is impossible to eliminate the very association with the spiritual condition of those who are praying. If the petitioner is even a believer, are they really saved? Do they need to be saved? They're praying for miracles, but what they need to pray for is salvation. Lord, deliver me, save me, and set me free. And once he has delivered, saved you, and set you free, then you're ready to pray the prayer of faith mm -hmm. and believe God to hear and answer your prayer. Listen to me today. Even if all such lurking various could be eliminated, one overreaching problem would remain. If prayer could be tested uh, empirically and forced to yield to concluded results, it would obviate and alleviate the need of our faith. We cannot discover God through observations and other means we come to him by faith god is not so clumsy that he could reveal himself in a way where he did not intend to do he who comes to god must believe that he is yeah. and that he is and he exists faith is the prerequisite and the priority to believe god does god answer prayer ask any believer on this line Ask any believer on Facebook Live, and they will emphatically tell you, yes, he's heard and answered my prayer. And so today I want you to know that it's time now for us to move forward and get into that place where we become prayer warriors, praying for our families, praying for our city, 
praying for our government, Lord Jesus, especially here in America. We need to pray for God to hear and answer our prayers and move us into a place of safety rather than destruction. So today I want you to understand that we need to make sure that our prayers line up with God's will. Let me say that again. We need to make sure that our prayers line up with God's will. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. Praying in accordance with God's will is essentially praying in accordance to with what he would want. And we can see God's reveal will throughout scripture. And if we do not know what to pray for, Paul reminds us that God's children can pray and rely on the Holy Spirit to intercede for us. The Bible says this, as the Spirit intercedes for the saints in according with God's will, Romans 8 and 27. And since the Spirit of God knows the mind of God, the Spirit prayer is always in keeping with the will of the Father. And so when you ask and intercede in prayer, the Holy Spirit intercedes in prayer with you and for you, and God will hear and answer your prayer. Also today, we should make sure we have no unconfessed sin in our hearts when we pray. Let me say that again because I don't want you to miss it. We should make sure we have no unconfessed sins in our hearts when we pray, as this will certainly be an impediment to effective prayer. But our iniquities have separated us from your God. Your sins have hid his face from you so that he will not hear. Isaiah 59 and 2, Psalm 66 and 18. Fortunately, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so today we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, for the sins we've committed, omitted by thought, word, and deed. We ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive us now, cleanse us, and bring us into a state of righteousness where our prayers will be heard. Another barrier to effective communication with God is praying with selfish desires and wrong motives. Let me say that again. You need to hear me today. Another barrier to effective communication with God is praying with selfish desires and wrong motives. When you ask and do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, mm. that you may spend what you get on your pleasures, according to James 4 and 3. Rejecting God's call or ignoring his advice, Proverbs chapter 1, 24 through 28. Worshiping idols, according to Jeremiah 11, 11 through 14. Or turning a deaf ear to the cry of the poor, Proverbs 21, 13 serves as an additional obstacle to an effective prayer life. You must put all of these things away from you in order for you to understand and know that God is going to hear your prayer. Effective prayer is a way to strengthen our relationship with our Father in heaven when we study and obey the word of God. Hear me today and seek to please him with the same God who made the Son and it stood still is the same God that will help you and me as he helped Joshua in the day of battle. Invite us to come boldly before the throne of grace and pray with confidence that he will extend his mercy and grace to help us in the time of need. And that means that you and I are now coming before him in belief, holding to the faith of God and standing on a firm foundation. I don't know about you, but my song comes to mind. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Why? Because all other ground is sinking sand. In other words, today, if you don't want to be on sinking sand, you need to be on the firm foundation of the word of God and prayer. And so today, as we get ready to conclude, I need you to hear me today. What does it mean to watch and pray? That's very important for all believers worldwide. 
to learn how to watch and pray. Jesus used the phrase watch and pray on a couple of different occasions. One was for the night before the crucifixion. Jesus took his disciples with him to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prayed that this cup be taken from me, Matthew 26 and 39. After the prayer, he found what? His disciples sleeping. He was grieved that they could not even pray with him for just one hour and warned them to watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I don't know about you today, but if you cannot pray for an hour, you need to go back and learn to wait on God and hear him in your spirit release you until you pray and the prayer has been heard. Another occurrence of the phrase watch and pray is found earlier in Jesus' ministry when he prophesied about the end times, which we covered last week. Luke chapter 21 details many of these events, and Jesus warned that they would happen suddenly. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. Luke 21 and 34. He then says, be always on the watch and pray that you may not ex be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Verse 36, watch and pray. The word translated watch means to have the alertness of a guard at night. A night watchman must even be more vigilant than a daytime guard. In the daytime, dangers can often be spotted from a distance, but in the night, everything is different. A night watchman must use senses other than sight to detect danger. He is often alone in the darkness, and without the defense, he would otherwise be empty, or empty and unemployed. There may be no indication of the enemy attack until it happens, so he must be hypervigilant, suspecting at any moment that it is a type of watching that Jesus spoke about. Your enemy comes to you as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You're going to have to be ever vigilant and watchful because you can't see him. He's a spirit. But you can know him by the word of the living God. And the Bible says if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. So today I want you to understand it's time for us to be watchful even as we are prayerful. Hear me today. Jesus warned us that we are too easily distracted by the physical and will be caught unaware if we do not continually discipline ourselves. In the Garden of Gethsemane, sleepness overcame the disciples. Their physical need overpowered their desires to obey Christ. He was grieved when he saw this, knowing what was ahead for them. If they did not remain spiritually vigilant, in tune with him, John 15 and 5, and ready to deny the flesh, they would be overcome by the evil one, Satan, and his demons. Jesus' disciples today must also be watchful and prayerful. We are easily distracted by this world, our fleshly needs and our desires, and the schemes of the enemy, 2 Corinthians 2, 11. When we take our eyes from Jesus and his soon return, our value begins to shift. Our attention wanders, and soon we are living like the world and bearing little fruit for God's kingdom. 1 Timothy 6, 18 through 19. He warns us that we must be ready at any moment to stand before him and give an account of our lives. Romans 14 and 12. 1 Peter 4 and 5, Matthew 12, 36. So today, hear me, watch and pray. We can only remain faithful when we are devoted in prayer, in prayer, in prayer, and in praise. We continue to allow God to forgive us, cleanse us, and teach us, and strengthen us to obey his will. John 14, 14. In order to keep watch, we must pray for endurance and freedom from distractions of this world. Oh my God, we must pray without ceasing, which I mentioned earlier, but I'm mentioning it again. First Thessalonians 5, 17. And when we live with the eagle expectation of the Lord's return, 
and expected persecution until he comes, then we are more likely to keep our lives pure and our hearts ready to meet him and always in constant prayer. And so today as we get ready to close, I need you to go back to the spirit of prayer. You know, there was a time that we had Bible study, but we also had prayer meeting. Usually, Bible study would have five or ten. Prayer would have one or two. But can I understand something today? Prayer is so important mm -hmm. that you need to know how to stand in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tribulation, in the midst of your problems, and pray the prayer of faith and be heard by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So today, I want you to become a prayer warrior. That's what I said. I want you to become a prayer warrior. And although the word prayer warrior is not found in Scripture, a prayer warrior is generally thought of as a Christian who prays continually and effectively for others in the manner of praying taught by the Word of God. Therefore, prayer warriors pray to the Father God, Matthew 6, 9, in the power of the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 3.16, Jude 1 and 20, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, John 14.13. To be a prayer warrior today is the prayer to be engaged in this spiritual battle, to fight the good fight of faith, and to wear the full armor of God, praying in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, especially for your family, especially for your community, especially for your city, so on and so on. While all Christians are to be prayer warriors, there are some people who feel they have a special and unique ability to pray and have been called by God to pray as their special ministry. In other words, the ministry of prayer intercessors. The Bible never specifies certain people who are to pray more often, more diligent, or more effectively than other Christians. But there are, and hear me today, diligent prayer warriors who are known for their emphasis on prayer. Mm -hmm. Paul commends that request, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for who? Everyone. 1 Timothy 2 and 1. And he says nothing that would indicate some people are exempt from doing so. Well, All believers in Christ have the Holy Spirit who helps us communicate our prayer requests. According to Romans 8, 26 and 27, all believers ought to be praying in the name of Jesus Christ, which means that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior, and we must trust him for everything, including his interceding with the Father for us in all things, and that we live and pray in accordance to God's will. Praying in Jesus' name does not mean merely adding in Jesus' name or to our prayer, but rather it means praying in submission to the will of the Father and understanding that Jesus Christ is the one who will intercede for us. So today, effective prayer is indeed a work, and we have learned to walk with God, so we meditate daily on him and his ways in order to become more and more humble, which is essential to effective prayers. Second Chronicles 7, 13 through 15. We also study scriptures thoughtfully every day to learn what is pleasing to God and therefore what constitutes acceptable prayer. We learn to eliminate hindrance to prayer, Mark 11, 25, 1 Peter 3, 7, and not to grieve the Spirit of God, Ephesians 4, 30 to 32. We learn that we are in a spiritual battle with Satan, mm. so we must pray for our own spiritual well-being to maintain our strength and focus in praying for others, according to Ephesians 6, 12, verses through 18. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man will always avail much. Prayer warriors are a heart for God, a heart for prayer, a heart for people, and a heart for Christ's church. Therefore, we pray continually and trust that God answers each prayer according to his perfect will and according to his perfect timing. So let's end this session today with the scriptures on prayer. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, Rejoice always, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
Oh my God, I feel like saying that again. Rejoice always, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And this is also a song that we can sing from the scriptures, giving thanks to God in prayer. Not only that, but pray as communication. Prayer is primarily seen as a two-way dialogue between God and you. It is not just making prayer requests, but expressing genuine confessing our sins and simply connecting with God in worship and adoration, a time of praise and a time of prayer. Humility and sincerity. God cares more about your heart than your eloquence. Fancy words or public display aren't necessary. Prayer authenticates, pray humbly, and pray from the heart. Just pray, God, here I am, a sinner who needs your help. God, here I am, sick who needs to be made whole. God, here I am, just down here praying that you give me more hope, give me more stamina to be able to sustain myself in the midst of all the trials and tribulations that I'm going through. So we're going to pray the prayer and believe God for the word of God to sustain us in our lives. According to Mark 11 and 24, Therefore I tell you, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive it, and it will be yours. Romans 8 and 26, Likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself intercedes for us with groaning and deep for words. Matthew 6 and 6, But when you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Colossians 4 and 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Oh my God today. I need you to understand that this is a time now for us to move forward in prayer. And in Philippians 4 and 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And that's what we've done today. Lord, we want our family saved. Lord, we want our community safe. Lord, we want you to touch in our homes and bring us back to that place where we honor and glorify your holy name. So the Bible said, be not anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And we're presenting our request to God today that he hear and answer our prayers. And you will have testimony by this time next week. My God, I didn't believe it, but I see it with my eyes. That boy is now saved. That girl has now repented. They have now come forth out of sin and shame and come into the righteousness of God. So today, I need you to understand that First Chronicles 16, 11 says, Look to the Lord and to his strength. Seek his face always. Second Chronicles 6, 21 says, Hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel, when they pray toward this place, hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. And so today as we close, I want you to understand that there's very important verse found in the book of Second Chronicles 7 and 14. And we close with that. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Today we pray the prayer of faith. Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive us and bring us back now into that place where we can rejoice in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring us back to that place where we seek to forgive and confess our sins on a day-to-day -day basis, that our hearts might be cleansed, our minds might be renewed, our lives might be restored. We will call on you and believe in your holy name. And the Bible said in Jeremiah 29 and 12, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. 
This has been the prayer of faith, storming the gates of prayer and believing the word of the living God. And this is Apostle Ellie Anderson, along with our prayer institute and our church, wishing you this day a time now to go back and move in the realm of prayer. Because when you do, God will hear and answer your prayers. So until we talk to you again or see you in another service, I'm asking the word of God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, to touch you, to deliver you, to sustain you, to keep you in perfect peace with your mind stayed on him. And remember now, prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. Until I talk to you again or see you in another service, this is Apostle Ellie Anderson and our church saying to you, go with God.